Hello everyone, I'm glad you could join me for this series covering Scaleform and the Unreal Development Kit. My name is Henrik Raosa and I'm from Voxhouse Studio. And I'll be presenting this series for Unreal Development Kit users of all different types, from artists to programmers. In the first episode of my VoxCast series, I went into a bit of detail already about the significance of the Unreal Development Kit in Scaleform. So if you don't know very much about what it is and you'd like a primer, go ahead and check out that video. Then come right back here and continue with me because I'll be showing you how to make a full-fledged menu system for your UDK game. And importantly, this is using absolutely any program that can output ActionScript 2.0 in the Shockwave Flash format. So that and a tiny bit of kismet knowledge in Unreal is all you need. Of course, you can get a whole lot deeper than this if you wish. And I'll be explaining the core concepts, but also exploring it from a number of different angles, because everyone has a different way of working. There are some recommended practices that you absolutely should know about when using Scaleform. I just noted a few of them on the screen, and I'll be discussing this more soon. But first, I want to show you what's possible to do in just a few hours' time for somebody who has some significant Flash experience and Unreal Ed knowledge. Because there may be a misconception among some that you need to take all kinds of steps before you can even begin, but this is not the case. Another notion I want to dispel is that learning action script is some kind of mammoth undertaking. Even among non-programmers, the kind of thing that you'll be required to know is roughly equivalent to the complexity of HTML which is to say not very complex. And I think your creativity will be taken to new heights when it comes to coming up with unique interfaces, especially as compared to using UI scenes in Unreal. As for the more complex interactions that you'll be needing to do with Unreal Script, Skillform has come up with what are called click widgets. What click widgets are are basically flash components ranging from form fields to sliders, buttons, and anything else that you might need in order to create a menu system. But the real key advantage to using them is that they already have all the necessary functionality built right into them in order to interface with Unreal Script. Furthermore, they're performance optimized. But before I get more into their use, I'll talk about this menu system that I've made without click widgets. And it's important for me to explain this because I've followed best practices where possible, but at the same time I've broken a few rules, one of which you can see here if you look carefully. A good rule of thumb in my opinion is that the rules can sometimes be broken once you understand what they are, why they exist, and why you're breaking them. So what this visual has just demonstrated is a menu system that works using button actions in action script. Now these buttons more or less contain what are called FS commands. This is something native to Flash. So these FS commands in ActionScript in Flash communicate with Unreal using an FS command node in Kismet. Kismet is Unreal's visual programming language, and this can be accessed using the K symbol in the Unreal editor. Now they don't recommend that you actually use FS command for production environments. But to be honest, if you're a hobbyist, or you're just making a simple game, this doesn't matter too, too much. So what can you do with that? All kinds of things. The same kind of things that you would normally do with triggers. What I just demonstrated is a button loading a map using a console command in Kismet. The button nav over in press states in Flash also fire off FS commands, which trigger Unreal to play sounds which correspond to them. Let's take a little bit closer look at some of the kismet involved here. I'd recommend full screening this if you haven't already. At the basis of the functionality is the OpenGFX movie node. This causes the specified shockwave flash file from your Unreal content browser to appear on the screen. The other half of the functionality comes from the FS command event nodes, which aren't actually physically attached to the OpenGFX movie. They simply detect the FS commands being fired off from the action script inside the movie. Now they can only do this when the name of the movie matches inside the FS command and inside the OpenGFX movie node. These other nodes like toggle cinematic mode and the matinee don't matter to the actual functionality of the menu itself. You could say that they're just there for the look and the polish. Because typically at least you don't want spawned players running around fragging each other inside your menu system. 
and you might want some kind of cool idling looping animation going on with your logo or something else in the background. So before I finish off with this introduction, I'll show you a little bit of what's going on inside the Flash development environment where we actually make this menu. Let's take a look at the structure of this movie. On the main timeline, I have what's called a movie clip, which contains all the stuff that we want in our menu. And you see that when I click edit, a new timeline appears containing keyframes, which hold all our pages of our menu system. So if I click the keyframe, which I've labeled about UDK, you can see the text areas and the resized menu that I've made for this page. A few frames further back, we have some tweens, which contain the initial animation for our main menu. Now if I click one of the buttons, you can see all the action script that's necessary for the button to function. And it's not a whole lot, is it? In fact, a good portion of this code isn't actually necessary for your button to function the way you want. I just have some fancy animations and things like that. In the next video, I'll be walking you through the creation of a simpler version of this menu that can even be done in less than one hour. Here you can see that I've created an options page with buttons that correspond to different resolutions. Each button either contains a command to go to a different frame or to fire off an FS command, which can be arbitrarily named. The only thing that matters for the functionality is that you have a corresponding identically named node inside Unreal. So that just about wraps it up for this introduction. And just to show you, this title bar was a dynamic input text field with a drop shadow effect applied to it. Very, very easy to create in Flash, and the fonts can be embedded in the file. And the mouse cursor, by the way, is a very simple Flash graphic with only something like two lines of action script attached. So stay tuned, I'll be giving you a walkthrough on that and more in the next vid.